Today we're here to announce the birth of a new football team, one that bears the name of our capital city, London. The London Bees Women's Super League team will be a new independently managed club playing right here at the Hive London. This is not a ladies version of a men's team, as so many are, but a new club with its own badge, its own identity, its own kit and its own administration. As part of this launch, we also want to announce the biggest sponsorship deal in women's club football history and introduce you to our new main sponsor, Stanmore College. The sponsorship will provide finance and resource to the value of half a million pounds over the next three years. But this sponsorship comes with a real twist because we're including an educational programme as part of our relationship with the college. This will make them not only a sponsor, but will fully integrate them with the running of the club and the stadium. The students of Stanmore College designed the badge, chose the kit, and started work on creating a new website. They will be involved in the hospitality, catering, stewarding, marketing, and every other aspect of running this new and unique football club. This club will be run by the community, for the community. You'll shortly hear more about this from Jackie Mace, the principal of Stanmore College, who's sitting alongside me. And I'd like to thank her and her colleagues for their vision, support, and backing of this new initiative. I also have here Hans Verkul from Yako, who have come on board to be the kit supplier for the new London Bees team. But again, this is not the usual men's replica that most ladies' teams have had to put up with in the past. Yako are a leading manufacturer from Germany and one of the few suppliers who produce tailor-made women's football kit. Gone are the days when we send the girls out there in leftover XXL men's shirts ballooning around their ankles. The London Bees is a fully-fledged women's football club and so we'll have a properly tailored women's kit. Our ladies will look like ladies, but play like the comp competent young women that they are. Our club captain, Sophie Harris, is a current England under-20 international, and we'll hope she'll be playing in the uh, Women's Under-20s World Cup in Canada this summer. She's also sitting alongside me, wearing the new kit, and shortly we'll be appointing a new manager and holding free trials for players beginning on February the 1st. So if you are a female athlete who can kick a ball and want to be part of this, then go to our website and book yourself to come down and get involved. The Hive is right on the Jubilee line and we are just a short tube ride from anywhere in London. So whether you want to learn in football, play or support, we have something here at the Hive for you all. And hope fans of all men's football teams in the capital will be able to throw away those old rivalries and get behind this new exciting ladies team. The London Bees is a new team, born in London for Londoners. Jackie. Thank you very much indeed, Tony. Um, Stanmore College is delighted to be a major sponsor of the London Bees. This exciting new ladies football club, operating from these top class facilities, exactly fits with our vision to bring the very best employability skills to our students and provide the direct line of sight to work, which is so important to young people in today's challenging economic environment. We think that the unique mixture of cash sponsorship plus in-kind contributions um, adds up to a deal which is indeed worth several hundred thousand pounds over the next three years. We want our students to share in this exciting initiative, which is right on our own doorstep. The government and employers' groups alike have emphasised how important it is for young people wanting to break into today's tough employment market to have work experience. This groundbreaking sponsorship scheme will give Stanmore students the opportunity to do all the jobs outlined by the chairman, all supervised by qualified staff so that they learn their trade well. For example, um, the badge and the kit design have um, been done by Christy and Ahmed, students of Stanmore College, and it's an ex excellent example of how the college is adding value <coughs> to the club whilst providing a real live commission for the design students. 
We also hope that as many of the um, women's team as possible will choose Stanmore College as their education provider because we're able to offer a whole range of A-levels, vocational courses and higher education options, foundation degrees and HMDs, not just in sport but in dozens of different subjects so that the students are set up for a successful career. Stanmore College is officially designated a good college by Ofsted and it provides outstanding support to learners as well as a fantastic learning environment, including progression to universities, apprenticeships and permanent jobs. So, in a nutshell, we plan to harness the excitement of London Bees and use it for the benefit of all our students as well as making a significant contribution to the local economy and the local community. Thank you very much. Uh, and if I can hand over to hands on my left here, from Yaka. Yeah, thank you. I just have a small sentence. I just want to say thank you that we are being part of this wonderful project, and I hope that we are doing a couple of years together with this development we did. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you on board. Um, any questions? Uh, Tony, how, how did this, uh, this all come about? Um, so, in my past life as an FA director, I was involved with the committee of, that set up the Women's Super League. And I just felt, you know, I was quite disappointed the way the league kind of followed the direction of the men's football leagues. And just felt that uh, ladies football needed to have its own direction, it, you know, its own identity. Uh, somehow along the line, it, for me, it, it loses its identity within a within what happens in men's football. And you look how big it is in the States and in other countries. So I just figured, you know, there was an opportunity to just go with a new name. And there was no one representing London, really, properly. So I just figured, you know, we have the hive here, so why not the London Bees? <laughs> and just in terms of the partnership with uh, Stanmore College, I mean, where did that idea stem from? So uh, our other ladies team, Barnet FC ladies, have been supported by Stanmore College for a number of years. So we already had a relationship and it was a case of convincing Jackie here <laughs> to expand that relationship and, and kind of embrace the whole idea. To be honest, I didn't need a lot of convincing because we've, we really believe in the power of sport at the college and we believe in the power of working with local employers and being able to give something back. And I, so I think our visions coincide quite well. And certainly, I mean, the facilities, are, I'm, I'm guessing, probably Just played a big amazing. part in that. We, we do use the facilities already for, yeah. our, for our football teams, men and women, at the college. Cricket, you mentioned the, uh, the fact that it's going to be an independent <coughs> club. Does that mean no English advantage, FC? No, it's the long, they play at the same venue, right? But mm -hmm. they're their own club, their own identity, uh, they have their own people running the club. Uh, they're completely separate from Barnet FC. We actually have another resident club in that we have London Broncos as yes. well playing here. So effectively we now will have three resident clubs uh, playing at the Hive. Right. And the, the Barnet FC women's team, is that continuing? Uh, that's something for the Barnet FC management to decide. But there was an issue with the FA about having two teams. Uh, so I think probably we'll just continue with London Bees. So that could mean the end of Barnes FC? No, they'll become a development team for the London Bees. So how far down the line was it decided then that you would go London Bees rather than Barnet Women? Uh, we tendered for the franchise some, um, must have been a year ago now, I'm not sure. Um, so the idea sort of came along about a year ago. Uh, and has developed over that time. And so with the club going to be playing here at the Hive as well as Barnet and London Broncos, I mean, just in terms of the facilities and pitch-wise, I mean, how is that going to be managed? Because there's a lot of sport players on the <coughs> Well, London Broncos and London Bees uh, are summer sports. So they're mainly their games are in the summer when the pitches are a lot firmer. Um, the Rugby Football League is more of a running sport as opposed to Rugby Union, which is more scrums, if you like. Um, so we're not anticipating a problem. I mean, you never know because the way the weather's going in this country, I think we're going to get snow in June. But, you know, that aside, uh, it should be okay. Um, 
actually the women don't do a lot of damage to the pitch either, so <laughs> that's quite handy too. And in terms of the expectations, I mean, what, what are the expectations of the club going forward? Then? So it's a new club, first year. Um, uh, we, you know, it's going to take a bit of time to settle down and work. Uh, but the advantage they have is because of the Barnet ladies in the past who, who, who did extremely well. You know, a very, very successful team. Uh, and because they've got that to dovetail into the London Bees, hopefully they'll be able to start with a reasonable squad from day one. And you say you've already got strong backing in terms of power, and is, is it going to be a financially viable for, for yourself and, and, and the club? Um, well, are you saying is the club financially viable oh, to exist? <laughs> well, it needs to. Um, well, we have, you know, we've tendered for the franchise, and in order to do that, we had to produce a business plan. Uh, Jill and John Jones and Graham Sliper, who did fantastic work on behalf of the old ladies team at Barnet, helped put together that whole whole tender process, and it was very thorough, and they did a great job. Uh, and I'm confident that the business plan is robust and supported. We can support it. Mm. And say so, London Bees, I mean, how much you look for that big fan base, I guess, even though you are competing against clubs like Arsenal and Chelsea, Charlton, etc. Well, look, I, I don't know any Spurs fan that's going to go to an Arsenal ladies game. <laughs> uh, you know, the fact is, we're a team for London. You know, just, just get behind the capital. We look at it as, you know, this is neutral. You don't have to worry about your old rivalries. An Arsenal fan can support London Bees. A Spurs fan can support London Bees. A Chelsea fan can support London Bees. Anybody in London can support this new ladies team. And, you know, let's face it, we're always hearing about the Manchester clubs. Let's have a London club, why not? How's the player recruitment working at the moment? Is there a crossover between the two clubs? Or? Yeah, so at the moment, um, we, we've got the Barnet ladies team are acting as uh, our, our put together a development squad. Uh, and the coaches there are acting as coaches that will hopefully feed into London Bees and there'll be a trial, trials held on the 1st of February. You know, there's a lot of ladies out there who, uh, who could probably be great footballers, athletes who run very fast and who maybe have the talent but haven't thought about football as a career before. Uh, and this gives them a chance to get involved. So uh, I'm, we're hoping a lot of people will turn up who haven't thought about football before, who get involved and actually with some coaching and the right setup, you know, it's going to be organic growth. It's going to take time to, to get people together working correctly. But, uh, so I'm not expecting us to pull up any trees in the first year, but uh, I'm hoping by the second we'll start to see some real results and performance. And if I look at Sophie over here, I mean, she's an England under 20 international. Uh, it's great to have her involved. She came to the club by choice. She had opportunities at much larger men's clubs, if you like. Uh, but here she is. Great to have you here. So. so are there any more core players like Sophie at the club at the moment? Yeah, oh yeah, we already have a core group. Um, so, yeah, it's good. How many players do you have at present? Um, I think they signed up about a dozen, uh, about a dozen on induction. So I, I can't give an exact number, I'm not that close to it. I'm right. Because you have your first match quite soon. Uh, they've got a cup game coming up soon. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. But our development squad could, could deal with that. We're playing Leeds. It should be fun. We just want to we just want to play with a smile and have a bit of fun with it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, obviously, football's a results business and you need results. But this is new, so it's going to take a bit of time to bed in. I'm not expecting anything fantastic straight away, that's for sure. Right, Sophie, what was the, um, the main attraction for you to come here to London Beach? As I say, the vision of the club was quite promising. I'm just glad to be a part of something new and something that's got good initiative. And to be back playing as well is my big focus, uh, which hopefully, being involved with London Bees, we can have a good future. Even in this first year, we're going to look at pushing and challenging the difficult teams that are in the league at the moment. Where were you playing your trade before? Um, I've just come from Arsenal at the moment. Um, they, they were a good team, good experience as well for me. But yeah, my focus is on playing and I feel like I can bring something experience from being involved with the Champions League and also playing well and hopefully doing keeping clean sheets and getting good results for the team.
you have any experience as a, as a captain or so? Because it's all new to you. Uh, at Lincoln, I was captain when I was at Centre of Excellence. I got picked. I'm, I'm very talkative on the pitch anyway, so uh, <laughs> I don't think that would be a problem for me. Anything else? Well, just one little point on, on the um, uh, sponsorship deal. 500,000 said he, he could um, down to 500,000. That word could, does that mean it won't necessarily be? Uh, could be more. Um, yeah. we, we, you know, there's, a, there's a very large cash element as part of that, uh, which is paying or going towards paying and supporting the administrative setup. Um, and there's also a large amount of resource going in. I mean, you're going to come here to a match, a ladies' match, uh, and the turnstiles will be operated by the kids, the catering run by the kids. They're putting together the business plan. They, they, they run, Stanmore College have stewarding programs, hospitality programs, marketing programs, and what we're doing is tapping into all of that to run the club. So it's completely different and unusual almost, you could almost say it's almost American, if you like, <coughs> where the colleges are very closely linked to the sports clubs. And for us, this is quite an exciting new prospect. Uh, and it's a way, someone asked a question about uh, the finances and how they would work. It's a way for us to show sustainability moving forward. And that's what Stanmore College for us brings to the table. They bring sustainability for the club. And also it means a lot of the girls, and let's face it, it's, it's the younger girls who will be coming through. They'll be able to do educational programs alongside their training. So, you know, it's quite interesting to note that any player at the London Bees will be able to actually, you know, integrate their, their playing with an educational program. Do you, do you have or do you need an indoor facility? Uh, we have one we use in Harrow. Uh, but, you know, I've never quite understood this, the, the issue with indoor facilities, we, we play football outdoors. I don't see anyone who plays football indoors. And, you know, in the current, you know, one of the issues I have at the moment is with our current youth system, Elite Player Performance Plan, which requires an indoor facility, yet nobody wants to use indoors because nobody plays indoors. It, it kind of makes no sense to me. We've got two full-size 3G artificial pitches on site uh, that of, of the highest quality, use, they could be used for international and Champions League games, they're that higher standard, and a lot of international teams that have trained here, and we've had Brazil training here, Germany training here, we've had lots of teams training here, Denmark are on their way, and, and they use these pitches as well as the grass pitches quite regularly. Uh, and, you know, it just, I've never had the mask to want to train indoors. I, I don't understand why that's become part of the criteria nowadays or where that comes from. Good question. Um, <laughs> I've used your facilities on the 3G and I, I can testify how good they are. Thank you. Tony, who's taking charge of team affairs in, in the short term? Obviously I know you had an induction day yesterday for the yeah. players. So, so uh, young Lydia, who, who runs our, ran our team at uh, Barnet FC along with Tracy, uh, has been putting together our development squad uh, and is uh, looking after our players at the moment and coaching them and training them.